Hey everyone, welcome to the Be Bold, Make Waves podcast, a show bringing you inspiring stories of women who are growing and scaling their business. I'm your host, Laura Comark, a website and tech integration specialist who works with online business owners who love their work and not their website. Join me as we have incredible conversations about business, mindset, productivity, and of course, the website and tech behind the business. Let's go ahead and dive in to this week's episode. Hello, and welcome to this week's show. For those of you who don't already know me, I'm Laura Comark, web designer, evergreen system, and funnel integration specialist for women who love their work, but not their tech. I am so excited to introduce you to my guest today. Kristen is a corporate dropout turned entrepreneur and the founder of Dream in Color Marketing. With a passion for empowering small businesses, she specializes in developing existing brands, executing effective marketing strategies, and optimizing operations to make brands come alive. As a former marketing lecturer at Central Connecticut State University, Kristen discovered her true calling is working directly with small business owners. Kristen's journey took an unexpected turn after receiving a breast cancer diagnosis. It was a challenging time, but today she is cancer-free and dedicated to igniting success for entrepreneurs through coaching, strategy, and content consulting and creative, creative services. Dream in Color Marketing provides businesses with the tools to save time, leverage experience, and drive growth. Growth. Kristen, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about your backstory of how you started Dream in Color Marketing? Yeah, absolutely. So I was. I'm going to say it was 2015 and I got laid off from my corporate role. Mm -hmm. And then shortly thereafter, I had a car accident. So I was interviewing for jobs in the corporate world. Um, and, you know, the, it because I was in pain from my accidents, I had a little injury. They were not going so well, I would say. I was kind of, you know, pain was oozing out of me a little bit at that time. And um, just kind of part of my demeanor. And, you know, my friends and my family were all very much like, I don't understand why you're not just going out on your own. You should just go do this. And I thought, well, I, I just want the stability of having a nine to five job. And I've always had an entrepreneurial bug. So I think that's why they were kind of like, what, why are you not just doing this? This is what you should be doing. At that time, I wasn't really quite ready, but I, a little bit down the road, I sat uh, down, I was paying some bills on my couch and I had everything sort of spread out all around me. And I was just looking and going, this, this can't go on like this. How am I going to do it? And I was doing some real estate and my broker called me up and she said, who created your website? And I said, I did. And I, and then I was like, okay there are people seeing my work that have um, value, that thinks that it has value. It's not just my friends and family being kind to me, right? <laughs> this, is, this is a real thing. And so Dream and Color Marketing was launched. And that's where um, I actually dreamed the name Dream and Color Marketing. And I said, this is, this is what my next step is. Oh, I love that. It's in, that was so interesting when you said that in 2015, that was actually the same year my entrepreneurial journey fully, when I went full-time because I had that super secure corporate job and got married, pregnant. They knew I was pregnant. And then they were like, surprise, your position's been eliminated. And I was like, ah. <laughs> so that was so, that stuck out to me. I was like, oh, that's very similar journeys right there of just kind of jumping into it before we were fully, you know, quote unquote, ready. As I know, I've talked with a lot of people that they were like, you know, doing the side hustle thing for a while and then had built up clientele and all that and then made the jump from corporate um, once they had kind of that safety net. So it's a very different, I feel, experience for those of us who were kind of like <laughs> forced into making some quick business decisions. How did you get your first clients? My first clients were, uh, I think, just through networking. I was going to a lot of networking events anyway uh, at that time. And so um, anybody that's been unemployed knows, like, you just want to get out of your house. So <laughs> kind of like, so I was going to a network events and, and it sort of just came about that way. I um, then when I the pandemic happened and all uh, cancer and all of that happened, I did step back from the business 
So um, I've now been back in it part time and then um, I'm pretty excited that this year I went full time into the business um, more so. So I was out there kind of talking to everybody and letting people know that I was in business and um, did they need any help with anything marketing related? Really? <laughs> So I feel like marketing can be such a broad term. Can we, we talk a little bit about what sort of marketing services you help clients with? Sure. Um, so my business focuses on brand strategy, um, optimization, and creative services for brand development. So um, from the creative side, we have things like videography and editing, photography, voiceovers, all of that type of work. And I have a team that I work with to support on the ground services. Um, mostly those clients are located in Northeastern United States. And um, then for the strategy side, we we work, you know, across the board, internationally, nationally, all, all of it, um, and work on sort of looking at people's websites as well as their social media. Uh, a lot of times I talk to people who just like me started their business and they either were forced into sort of forced into it or they got into business because they just love the thing that they love and they really want to share it with the world but they don't really know anything about running a business or what kind of marketing should be done right so I um, help them create systems and funnels um, that give them some feedback on their uh, what they've been doing in marketing. Sometimes you'll find that it's just they're doing all the right things, but there's just like one little thing that needs to be tweaked to make it work or convert. And it, it makes all the difference when they have someone with um, a different eye and not sort of in the weeds on their business looking at it with them. That, that's such a good point to bring up. I mean, some it's so hard when we are so close to our business to see the things that so often, like I know I have... Um, a lot of friends that I have little like mini peer led masterminds with. And it's so easy for like me to come up with content ideas for them. I'm like, I know what you could talk about. And I'm like, I have tons of ideas for you. I have a great idea for a new freebie for you. Here's a great presentation you could talk about. Here's questions I have about the thing that you do. But then when it comes to my own stuff, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yes, yeah. And it's so funny because I've been, there's a couple of marketing uh, folks in different parts of the state or around this area that I've talked to. And I'm like, I'm so excited to talk marketing with someone because <laughs> there's just not, you know, that's not in our businesses. We're doing all of the things a lot of times. So it's just not um, something that's always on the top of the mind with someone or um, it, we're having the opportunity even to talk because we're just so busy. So it's yeah. been great. Well, and marketing such an important piece to the whole picture. I mean, I know when as a web designer, I build websites for clients. They're like, so does this mean clients are just kind of come to me? I'm like, no, you have to go market your business. The website is just a tool that's there. So once you go out and market it, they land on your website and it's going to lead them in the right place. We have a user journey, customer experience, all those things in place for specific reasons. And then all your buttons are going to go to the right place. And we're not going to have a bunch of broken links, hopefully. <laughs> and that's what the website's for. The website's not necessarily going to just like open the floodgates. Don't get me wrong. We can do a lot with SEO um, or the SEO experts can. And, but you still have to go market your business. That's like key to success. Yeah, As, SEO is great to have, and but it is only one aspect of the business, like driving traffic through other channels, whether it's, you know, your social media or you're getting out there and doing educational talks or whatever, um, you know, events and that kind of thing, whatever you're doing for your top of the line, top funnel, um, pushing people towards that website so you can ultimately convert them. That's the goal, right? So um, it's, it's ultimately a great place, but you have to have to make everything sort of work as a system. And what I find when I'm talking with people these days anyway, is that because of the siloed nature sometimes of marketing um, that they they're just very much focused on well my mark my if we're saying social media for example is doing this but I'm not getting any clients from it but you're spending a lot of time so the one thing I ask them is where are your clients coming from and how are they getting to your business now because maybe we just try to enhance that way and that approach rather than push you into some area that you're uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, if you don't want to stand up and speak in front of people, then that's not a great spot for you to be. Um, 
Where do you find that your clients typically are, their clients are coming from, or is it just different across the board? I think it's different across the board. Um, Most of the time I'm finding a lot of them are coming from networking and in-person events. Um, And then some are, have developed reoccurring Mm -hmm. uh, contact with them through like email channels and things like that and staying top of mind. Mm -hmm. Um, But for, for the intake of new clients, I would say that the majority of the small business owners that I'm working with are mostly coming from a place of minimal actual marketing (laughs) that they're doing. I have so many things I want to talk about (laughs) from that. Would you, but first I want to ask, so are your clients typically like brick and mortar? Um, Or is it a lot of local clientele that you have, or is it more like the online service provider, kind of like what I do? So my clients are are typically service-based businesses. I do work, sometimes work with the nonprofits just because that's like really near and dear to my heart. Um, And I want to be supported of when I can. And, um, but most of the time, you know, my, my work experience and my history has been in service-based industries. And so I tend to focus more on those type of businesses rather than uh, brick and mortar or profit, uh, excuse me, product based businesses. So I am, I, every time I look at any of my marketing stuff, I'm like, and I know this, and I know this for most of my business friends as well. Like it's a full blown word of mouth by referral based business. That's -hmm. where my clients come from. I'm very active on Instagram. I've talked a lot on the show about how I've outsourced to Lizzie Matson at Wild Feather Co. She's done my Instagram for years and then we stopped for a while and then she just did a VIP day for me where now we have evergreen content, which is amazing because I've always really struggled with Instagram. It just does not work for my brain (laughs) and I can't figure it out. And so that's like the piece that I wanted to outsource so that I could know that I was showing up consistently somewhere and not having to like put in the brain power to necessarily try to figure out something that just didn't make sense to me. And it's interesting because at the same time, I don't necessarily get clients from that, but I do it to show up. And so people still see me. I have people tell me all the time. They're like, I see you all the time on Instagram and you're so, you know, you're everywhere and this and that. I'm like, oh, good. That's working because the visibility aspect. Right. But in terms of for people who it's like a word of mouth business, how, what's your recommendation for like probably the best marketing strategy? Well, I think that it just really depends on the business and what kind of, um, you know, service they're selling. I always think that growing your list is the most important thing that you can do. And then staying in front of people on a email list is most important. I mean, if you think just the other day, we had another social media outage. I'm sure that those will continue to happen. If uh, social media is a fabulous way to stay in front of people and visibility and and you can even convert people if you set it up correctly and, you know, do all the things that that make that happen. Um, A lot of times people are just using it for sort of community based or sharing information and that visibility like you're you're saying. But my ultimate goal is to have all of my clients convert any uh, social media followers, if possible, or anyone they meet out while they're talking to people onto an email list so that they can stay in front of them um, on a regular basis through email. And people will say, and I'm sure you probably have heard this too, well, how I, I don't want to email my folks too much and I don't know what to, to, you know, what to email them and what should we put out. There's so many things that you could email people and there's, um, and um, I was just talking to somebody the other day who told me that you know, I was so upset somebody unsubscribed and I was like, no, that's the wrong mindset around that, right? Like I was like, I'm going to have you do a mindset shift on this because if somebody unsubscribes from you, they are not your person and they are not probably likely to buy your service again. <laughs> and that's okay because we want to save room for the people who who are, we are connecting with and who are more likely to to connect with us and want our services. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. So all of that. <laughs> I am such a big fan of emailing. This is the thing that I've, and one of the things I've really started talking about more in the last couple of years and setting up for clients is evergreen email nurture sequences. Because I have one client who 
she's such a fabulous writer. She's a copywriter, but she's also like, her emails are so funny. I love getting her emails. And I told her she was, you know, consistent. She'd been in business about two years. And I'm like, I feel so bad for the people who are just now getting on your list because they will never get that past content. And it was good. It was funny. I love when you email me. I love reading your emails. I know there's tons of people who read her, like they look forward to her emails coming in the inbox. I'm like, why don't you take all those emails? We'll put them together in an evergreen nurture sequence. It's strategic. She had some digital products she'd created, but she, and she did a launch on them. And she also does her one-on-one services, but she wasn't really promoting her digital products that much. And we went, we set up a whole thing. I think we're up to five months now of evergreen emails and flash sales and like all the things. And it's working. I mean, she had one email in there that was like, hey, you need a speaker. I know a gal like to be on your podcast, to come speak at your summit, be in your a group, ex, an expert in your group. She got just flooded with all these emails for like podcast, you know, invitations oh. for podcast interviews. She got DMs on Instagram. And she was just like, wow, what? I'm like, well, that email went out because it was when we kind of dumped her whole list into the evergreen sequence. And when it got to that one, she's like, this is amazing. I'm like, yeah, you just went and created some marketing opportunities and visibility opportunities without having to think about it. (laughs) It just, and now anyone new coming into your list is going to get that same offer made to them of like, hey, do you need a speaker? You know, she's selling, I'll get a you know, mm-hmm. I'm like, please, I want, I want to hear every time you make a sale, like be that annoying person who's like, I got another one. Cause I want to celebrate that with you. And it's so fun. She's like, oh my gosh, I was out, you know, I took the day off. I was out with my son. We were back to school shopping or whatever it was. It wasn't this the wrong time of year to be doing that, but I forget what she was doing. She was not in the office and she's like, I made a sale today. I was like, yes, that's the point. <laughs> Love so it. That, that list is gold. I mean, that truly is so important in your business. I love it. And there's, and people will say, oh, email's dead. And um, I just, it's really not, it's not. And especially with this younger group of people that are coming up, I can see if you're targeting a, a sort of an older clientele, but, and they're like, oh, it, having some issues with it or whatever. It's, it's the new regular mail, right? So if, um, if you want to, have somebody in your inbox or show up and, and then, you know, for me, if I need somebody to do my roof, I, and I had someone there, I go right back to my email box and say, you know, this person worked well with me, everything went well. And now where, who is their contact information? It's right there, easy for me to connect with versus me trying to remember who they are and find them on a, a, a directory and then, you know, connect with them again. So um, I think it's it's really got its place in marketing. Absolutely. I mean, and for the people listening who maybe haven't been spending as much time on growing that email list, do you have anything that you would say to them on when the best time for them to start is or on any sort of encouragement for, I also know for me, I had a block for a long time of emailing my sad little tiny list when I had it, when it was, I was like, it's so small. And what if people are mean to me? What if they write back mean things, which no one did. But I mean, for anyone who might have a little like hesitation or, and that's actually not true. I had one person who like wrote unsubscribed and they were like, you have typos on your two typos on your homepage. And I was like, what? I had to call in a friend to like, I could not find what he was talking about. There was like two grammatical errors. I'm like, I'm not perfect. But that's fine. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> like you are not, if you, if that bothers you, you should not be on my list or in my world. Cause I'm not the right person for you. I'm way too e- easy breezy for it to be like, it's not buttoned up and Oxford comma in this room. <laughs> no, that's so funny that you say that because I always think it's funny when we, I do get an email back. Not funny, but I just don't know who has time to be doing that <laughs> to, to write back to somebody. And I think maybe sometimes they're trying to be helpful, like, oh, you have two typos or whatever, and and maybe you want to fix those, and that's cool. Um, and other times, you know, you get an email that is like, who, do you have time to write all these emails to these people? It just seems like a waste of time to me. Just move on with your life, right? So, yeah, I, I mean, I would say that you should start as soon as you want to, um, as soon as you're comfortable, or as soon as you start your business collecting emails, even if you do nothing with them immediately. Um, but even emailing a small list is, is good and better than, you know, waiting. 
Um, one of the challenges that I had was that I was emailing my list and then I had um, my health issue and cancer. And since I sort of stopped back, I stopped back from it. I was not able to you know, keep up with the emails to my list. So I had to warm up my list again and say to them like, hey, I'm back. And I sent out a funny little email just saying like, Hi, I'm back. And hey, Kristen, where you been? Like, kind of thing. <laughs> and sort of explaining what's been going on. And, and I actually did get a couple of, of nice emails um, back regarding my health and my cancer and all that. And so um, that was actually nice to see that somebody was actually reading my emails when they came in and not just deleting them. So it was pretty exciting. And every day I just go about trying to add more people into it. And, um, you know, if they're a good fit for my, for what I'm offering them and, and how I can serve them, then that's, that's the people I want to be in front of. Exactly. Yeah. I always get so excited when, cause I have a number of people on my list who I know personally, and then I have like the strangers and they write back. I'm like, Oh, this is fun. Let's start a little conversation. I love hearing from people on my list. It feels very special when I get replies and it does. It's like, oh, someone's yeah. reading this and it's not just going out into the void because sometimes it feels like that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. So I want to talk a little bit about the tech side of your business as a website and tech integration specialist. I love all things tech. What would you say is like one of your favorite tech tools that you use? Hmm. So I have a lot of my business going through Kajabi. So a lot of everything is wrapped up in that um, in that tool. So I don't have a ton of extra tools uh, at the moment. But I do use ChatGPT as a tech tool to try to help generate ideas um, for myself. And um, I think like the most important takeaway from ChatGPT is, and we used to say this in, in my corporate life is crap in crap out kind of thing <laughs> so you could put if you don't put the right information in you can't feel comfortable with the information that's coming out of it so you do have to know what you're putting in is valid information and um, it's not just hallucinating and throwing off uh, crazy comments to you but I do use that to sometimes generate ideas when I have a, a block um, or if I'm looking to you know, rewrite a piece of content or change the tone, something's not clear, I sometimes will ask for some clarification. So that has been great from a AI perspective. Yeah, I've been going down the AI rabbit hole for about the last year. That's been really interesting. Um, it's been interesting to see how chat GPT's kind of evolved in different ways. Um, and I still, uh, there was something I gave it the other day and it just was like, I can't help you with that. I'm like, what? Yes, you can. I was like, write this, add some empathy to the start of this email that is, you know, talks about this, this, and that. And it's like, I can't help you. I'm like, what? <laughs> Try again. And it was like, oh, okay, I can. And it's, yeah, it's been an interesting um, journey for sure. For someone who wants to use a little bit of chat GPT in their marketing, what are some things, um, aside from what you've already mentioned about it, that some good ways to use AI in marketing to generate ideas? Um, so I actually use it a lot, and this isn't to generate ideas, but uh, just as an idea of how I use it in marketing mm -hmm. is I use it a lot to analyze information. And so either whether that comes to be like an article or a, um, you know, some uh, piece of video content that I just don't have time to listen to. And I'm like, here, put this in here and tell me what the summary of, <laughs> of this article is, right? And uh, and give me the high points. Or um, for my clients, sometimes uh, often do social media analytic. So I can use it to analyze the impact of social media um, and what they're doing well and what competitors are doing well so that they're able to get that information. And then we use that information to inform marketing decisions. So it's all based on decision making as far as content creation or ways to talk to our audience and tone and language to use that will resonate with the audience. So. Um, taking data that we know is doing well and being able to analyze it and driving our marketing through 
actual figures and numbers is one of the best ways that I found to use the tool. So then what what numbers are you taking or data are you putting in there? What it, I want I want to hear more about this. <laughs> Yeah. So um, with our social media clients, we're able to just, you know, which we have a, f- a few people that we do the analytics for their social media. Um, we'll, we can take aspirational, you know, say somebody's got a wonderful channel that they're promoting a bunch of information on and, and you as the business owner want to be like them, right? Mm-hmm. That's who you're aspiring to be. So we can take their, um, do some with the tool that I have, we can go back into the back end of it and see how, what kind of content they're putting out. And then we do some manual analysis of that content and um, adjusting it. And then we would put it in to there for them to see the tool, um, GPT to find the patterns. So it's sort of a three-step process. One is extracting information, identify, or I guess four steps. One is identifying, you know, what content do we want to, do we aspire to be like as a business owner? Um, then kind of looking at that person's content as a second step. Then we do some manual uh, manipulation of that. And then we ask ChatGPT to go ahead and provide sort of the summary or the high points. And we can ask it for what are the keywords? What is the tone that the person is talking in? Um, what you know, what patterns are you seeing throughout this content? And it can summarize all of that for us. And then we can move that forward to our content creation team who help build the content. Oh, that's awesome. I love, I love all hearing how people use chat GPT in different ways, because I mean, it's just the, the ideas are endless. <laughs> it's, so it's a <laughs> lot of fun. Thank you for sharing that with us. Absolutely. That's super fun. So I would like to know, I want to talk a little bit about some of the challenges um, when you, that you've overcome since starting your business. You know, we all kind of go through this different journey and have, it's not, you know, it's entrepreneurship. It's not all sunshine, lollipops and rainbows. It's, it's not. <laughs> not today. <laughs> Tomorrow's not looking good either. <laughs> well, I would love to hear about you know, when you first went out on your own, what were some of the fears and doubts that you had? I think the biggest, I have two really that I think were the biggest. One is, um, has been imposter syndrome and just, I'm, I know other people struggle with it. Um, but I really was like, and I still am and kind of have to like pull myself out of this thinking that everybody knows what I know because Lots of people know what I know, but lots of people do not know what I know about marketing. And, you know, when I talk to my clients about things, they're like, this is, this has been great. This is such good information. And um, they find it very helpful. And I think that my teaching sort of background and lecturing at the school sort of had me lean into kind of the explanation uh, on the side of things. Um, and the other thing I think has just really been stepping outside of my comfort zone, you know, coming from a corporate background, I went in, I worked hard, I did my work and that was it. Um, but, you know, this experience as an entrepreneur and starting my business has been uh, nothing that I've done before and really had to say like, okay, what, what am I willing to do and what am I able to do and look at it that way. So really stepping outside of my own comfort zone. I always find it interesting too, like the things that feel so hard when we do them and then we continue to do them. And then it's, you know, it's, it's stretching that muscle and making, getting out of your comfort zone to do like whatever that one thing is. And then it does get easier the more you do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's I mean, really I mean, hard at the beginning. Yes, it can be. And I was, even when I started teaching at the, um, at the college, I, I didn't really like to stand up in front of groups and I was like, this is going to be hard, but it was always something I wanted to do. So I said, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And I remember the first day of class that I did that the first year. And I thought, this is this, I'm going to have a heart attack. I think, (laughs) you know, I was so nervous. It was really, was really um, hard. And then it just was like, okay, I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm in here and I'm okay. And um. I'm going to live through this experience. And now it sort of is, is second nature to me to be able to stand up in front of small groups of people and, and talk with them about 
marketing has essentially. <laughs> That's I love that. That's amazing. What um what would you say that you're doing that's being bold in the industry? How are you showing up different than some of the other people who are doing marketing? Hmm. So I think that there's probably others that are doing this, um, but I find that a lot of my clients that I'm working with, I am trying to teach them along the way. It's probably the teacher in me. Yep. And um, so one of the things that I have heard back from clients and prospective clients is, uh, thank you sort of for teaching me this, or will you talk? Because a lot of times an agency will just take it on, work through the problem. And then when the company is ready to, wants to take it back, they'll just go, okay, well, here are the logons for that. And then they'll just sort of like leave them with that information. You know, I think the idea of many times being is like, if we're separating ways, then I don't really owe you any kind mm -hmm. of uh, time or, or um, insight into my head or the way that things were going. And I try to not look at it from that perspective, because my goal is to help small businesses and business owners you know, enhance the community and feed their families and all of those things. So I really want, you know, to be able to share some of the knowledge along the way. Some people want it, some people don't, but it just depends on the on the person. But if if I'm able to, I like to be able to do that as well. I can relate to that so much because with all my clients, I am I love Loom. Loom is one of my favorite tools. I create Loom videos because I want to empower my clients to be able to go in and make changes to their website, understand fully like the tech setup that we have going on for their emailing and all their automations and things. And not a lot of web designers do that. <laughs> I had one client, um, I didn't build her website, but I do maintenance on it now. And she had her LinkedIn profile, or like the link for her LinkedIn um, icon. She had changed the profile name on LinkedIn. And so it was no longer working. And I went into the website and it should have been super easy to find, but it wasn't. And it's not a complicated website, but it was somewhere like deeply coded in the website. I spent a few different like hours trying to find it on different days. I had friends that would come and would do a share screen hop in. And we're like poking around. We could not find wherever the developer put this code for her LinkedIn. And so I said to her, hey, could you just and like we figured out a workaround, one of my girlfriends and I of like using a plug in better search and replace where we could just replace the URL. But I'm like the problem solver and the puzzle solution person in me was like, I want to know where it is. And so I asked her to reach out to the developer and just see if they would tell us where it was. And he basically was like, I can either show you and charge you X amount of dollars or for 50% less, I will just go do it for you. And so then he just went and did it. And still we to this day have no idea where it is. And I'm like, that's kind of a jerky thing to do. Like, to have something on, it's her website. She should be able to go in and make changes to it. Like that doesn't seem okay to me. And I think there is, I don't know if it's the women in the industry. I don't know if we just have dealt with a lot of that sort of thing in life that it doesn't feel okay for us to like lock down our clients' stuff. Like I want my clients to understand how everything works and have full access to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I know in the past I've worked with people who were helping build a website at one of the firms I was at and they and I just was like this is we're going to be able to go in there and make changes, right? Like this is not going to be complicated and they were like, "Yes, we're going to set it up for you to make changes." But I wonder if that's sort of to your point that makes sense like is it women that are sort of like wanting to make sure things are taken care of and that somebody can actively participate in it or men that want to gatekeep it a little bit more? Um I, I don't have, there's no evidence, to <laughs> but it's just an interesting question. It's just something, yeah, that I've definitely noticed um, as I've taken over like other websites. There was another website I recently, you know, have a new client that came on and they had the developer had put in code to like hide all um, on WordPress websites. There's like plugins that need updating and all these things because all the security updates and software updates come out. And there was code they put in to hide that there's any updates available. And so I'm like, why would you do that? Like wow. it's you're it's like disabling like the smoke detector <laughs> or the gas um gauge in a car. That's how that feels. That's a better analogy. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't know when you're running out of gas. 
Wow. Anyway, that's that's it's something. Very, <laughs> so I, I really feel strongly like I thought going back to the point of just really empowering our clients um, and showing up in a way and supporting our clients in a way where they are empowered to understand the work we do for them and how we help them. And it's more collaborative. So yeah, absolutely. I love that about um, being able to have those conversations with them. And, you know, sometimes I'll talk to a, a client of mine and she was like, you know what I would just really love is like a glossary of all the marketing tricks, you know, <laughs> like, because somebody will be talking and she's like, I just don't understand all of the things and I don't understand how they work together. So I feel like that's, that's the key to all of this is, is you can hire somebody to do this social media. You can hire somebody to do the content. You can hire someone to do the website, but if you don't understand how all these things work together, which is sort of where I come in. Um, I, I still could be using my team over here that does content or the website over there uh, team that does that or your website team that does that does it and handles it for another company. But if they don't really understand, um, you know, how these things work together for their benefit, then it's just really hard for them to get behind why we're suggesting a certain action or a certain strategy for them. Um, so I, that's why I kind of lean towards that that side of thing and being more collaborative and and sharing that knowledge that I have. I love that. I also find that I just I I'm I like my clients to be long term clients. I create long term relationships. It's not like a one and done ever with me. Like they don't get rid of me. <laughs> we, we're gonna hang out for a long time. So my clients are my most favorite people. <laughs> And so I think it also just really helps in having that open communication so that everyone's clear and on the same page as much as I try not to get too technical with people because I can see it when I do sometimes. <laughs> I was on a call before we got on this interview and I, I was getting a little too technical about something. She's like, I don't understand what you're saying. So yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I'm like, okay, sorry. <laughs> I got a little excited. Yeah, it does happen. It does. <laughs> I'm, I'm always like, oh, wait a minute. I can see on your face that you're not with me <laughs> Let me back but it's here. a good thing I promise don't worry yeah. just they're like uh-huh <laughs> oh I love that oh my goodness Kristen I could sit and talk with you about this all day long this is so fun but we are getting close to our time and I do have one question that I ask everyone who comes on the podcast and that is what is one piece of advice you would give someone when they are growing and scaling their business to help them be bolder be louder and make waves. I think the best advice I could give would be to step out of your comfort zone as much as you can. It doesn't mean you have to love the thing you step into, but you'll never know if you don't take that step and try something new. Oh, that's so good. Yes, I love it. Oh, Kristen, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Can you tell our listeners where they can go find you, hang out with you, find out more about your services, all the things? Sure. I am uh, at my website, of course, dreamandcolormarketing.com. I'm also on LinkedIn and I'm for Kristen L. Neal and on um, Instagram, I am at dreamandcolormarketing.com. Wonderful. I will link all that up in the show notes. Thank you so much for coming on today. This was such a fun conversation. Thank you for having me. It's so great. I'm glad we were able to chat. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode. Be sure to check out the show notes at lauracomark.com forward slash podcast. And if you're ready to turn your website into a marketing machine, get more sales, save time, and simplify the back end of your business, grab my free resource, Power Integrations for your website head on over to lauracomark.com forward slash power. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to subscribe. And also I'll just love you forever if you leave me a review. It helps get this podcast in front of other people that can help inspire. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you next week. Bye now.